I'll start with um, the two main rules for determining the meaning of a sentence <coughs> in Japanese. The first one is the verb is the central part of the sentence. Everything revolves around the verb. And then particles define the role of all the other pieces of information in relation to that verb, not word order, as we do in English. So if you have, we have a, so it looks kind of like something like this. You have this verb, and then everything connects to that verb somehow via a particle. Now there are other things that, and I'll get to that later. There are other ones that don't require a particle, um, but for the most part, the main pieces of information in a sentence, the main, um, the main things that are involved in any action, any activity, connect to that verb somehow via a particle. <coughs> um, so, um, yeah, so, so if we compare this to how English works, English, the central part is very different because we have subject, verb, object, and that, the relationship between those three words is determined entirely by the word order. So, um, Even if we, if we have a sentence that has a... Well, I've, so I've got topic in the Japanese version and subject in the English because I didn't want to get into the debate of uh, what versus ga today. <laughs> um, that'll take more than the 55 minutes I have. Um, but if we, if we assume for now that subject and, and topic are the same thing, the way that that, that information relates to the verb is... In, in English, it's 100% based on word order. We know what the subject is based on the fact that it comes before the verb. Whereas in Japanese, the only thing that determines that is the particle, and the, the word order is nowhere near as important. Um, so uh, the other, there are, for everything else, it's kind of it's very similar. So um, prepositions in English um, that link things like time, location, means, for example, they work very much like particles. They, you know, they go before instead of after, but they, because they're not part of that core central part of the sentence. They can also go in kind of any order. So if we look at a, at a basic example of this. So I've got uh, Taro Sonoriko at the library. So in English, again, word order tells us that Taro is the one that saw Noriko. Because Taro comes before the verb, we know that Taro is the one that's, that saw her. And because Noriko comes after the verb, we know that she is the one that was seen. In <coughs> Japanese, the only thing that tells us that information, or the, well, the thing that tells us that information, is the particle. The word order doesn't matter. So. Um, because we know that because o comes after Noriko, we know that Noriko is the thing, is the person, sorry, that was seen. And similarly, similarly, Taro wa, because because we mark Taro with wa, that's how we know who it was that actually did the scene. Uh, another example, which is uh, a little bit different in that it, um, so this doesn't have an object. So Taro went from the station to school, Noriko by car. More, there's more elements here, but there's no object. So in English, we can leave out the object because there isn't one. But the same thing still applies with the taro went. That word order tells us what it means. And so all of the other elements in, in English are related via the, uh, the preposition. Um, and the order of those doesn't really matter. We can say taro went by car to the station, uh, sorry, from the station to school with Noriko, or we can change it to any other order. We can rearrange the preposition, uh, the words defined by prepositions, or marked by prepositions, but we must keep subject verb together. Whereas in Japanese, we can kind of rearrange everything. Um, that's not to say that we always should, but in terms of the fundamental meaning of a sentence, the, because we have those particles, the word order is not so important. 